How's it going guys? I'm back here with the Samsung Galaxy S5 to show you the newest update which is to 5.0 Lollipop. I finally got the update. This is official, nothing uh, hacked or rooted or any of that stuff. I, I wanted to kind of hold off and actually let it do its full update to see how long it would take me to get it. And um, surprisingly I actually had to plug it into the computer and use Samsung Keys program in order to get this updated. Um, and I kind of discovered that by mistake because I wasn't really paying attention to the uh, interwebs and didn't know that it was already going out but I was doing a regular check you know you do the standard go into your settings scroll down to wherever they hid this about device here software you know the standard update now and do its thing so as you can see, if you're not familiar, you may notice that all the colors are already different, so it is true lollipop. Um, but you know, you normally get this message here to uh, that you already have the latest update, and I was still on 4.4.2, which I'm sure a lot of you still are. And I'm like, okay, whatever, yep, not available yet. And then I went to go plug it into Samsung Keys on my computer, which is their syncing. Um, uh, program so it helps you sync up back up your contacts and phone and pictures and all that fun stuff and makes it really easy to do and believe it or not it immediately told me I have an update available so I was like cool let's do this and it was this update now I did have to jump through some loops because I only had um, about 2.8 gigs of storage left so I had to first remove some programs or some applications off the phone in order to free up more than three gigs because it wants at least minimum three but it didn't stop at three I actually had to do like almost four um, but it needed it says it needs at least three gigs in order to install which it definitely was picky about that um, it also uh, needed me to unmount my SD card which I thought was really strange. I've never had to do that with any updates for any phones, including other Samsung devices. That was a little weird. But um, I had to unmount the SD card because it said that it could cause complications and, and cause the update to fail. So went ahead and did that. And then of course, my battery was, was about a uh, little bit less than 50%. So the update um, wizard or whatever would not let me update until I was, it didn't give me a, just a charge. I actually just say charge full, but it was right after about 70% when it finally said, okay, I'll let you update. So make sure you're you're all charged up and your storage is more or less empty, your, your standard in storage, and take out your SD card. Or if you just go into your settings, of course, you can do that and uh, go to your storage, go down to the bottom and unmount. That's all I did, and it worked just fine. So as you can see, I'm already back to under 3 gigs, and it's not installing anything new. So that's uh, just whatever the lollipop has done i haven't installed any new applications actually a little weird um but yeah it did already warn me that i'm going to have at least 520 something i think it was um, megabits less after the update that's how much more storage space that it needs the the system needs um so it's okay i got an i got a what is a 32 gig memory card in there so it's no big deal and as you can see, I'm on 5.0. It's the newest junk from Samsung. All of their knock security and whatnot. Um, this is for the SMG900F right there. It's for that model number. I've heard some other people um, have, I think, either H or G at the end there that are not getting it yet. So best, best bet is just, you know, if you don't already have keys, download keys. It's a great program to have anyways to sync up your phone. Um, and they just plug it in. It'll let you know if there's an update. So if there's not, there's not. That's just the way it is. But if they're starting to roll out now. I know if you're on a carrier branded device, it's going to take quite a bit longer because the carriers want to do their own checks and balances and make sure that their bloat word works on top of Samsung's uh, TouchWiz and all that good stuff. So it'll take longer, unfortunately, for you guys on, on carrier locked devices. But for the unlocks, they're rolling out. So let's just dive into this real quick. As you can see, you got the newer bright white and... Uh, you know lollipop stuff that make it all kind of bright and jazzy the little bits of material in there so you see on the top here when I pull down it's done you also have little touch animations that go all that lollipop stuff now in there um, some other things they've changed um, in your menu settings when you swipe down you now have your shutter style um, this is one area where I've noticed some weird lagging. If I have a whole bunch of notifications, right now it's actually doing fine. It's not really 
you know, able to see what it's been doing. But if I have like a whole bunch of them, like every once in a while I get a ton of Twitters at once and it'll be like, I don't know, 10, 15 messages I have to scroll through, it actually starts to jitter and, and get kind of, um, almost like the refresh is having a real hard time keeping up, which I thought was strange because I was under the impression that uh, Lollipop was supposed to bring something like 60 frames per second uh, refresh on these. So I don't know if that's true or not or if this you know device is even capable of doing that. Um, I haven't looked into that type of specs, but that's what I read. And you know, right now it's running nice and clean and smooth. That's fine and quick. So nothing to worry about there. But every once in a while, if you have a whole bunch of notifications, it's having a little time to... Uh, kind of catch up. Kind of what it does here, let's see if it'll do it. Yeah, you can see that kind of jittery motion that it does. It's almost as though it's on like real slow, you know, 15 frame per second refresh or something. I don't know what's going on there, but that's kind of what the shutters will do on notifications when there's too many. Um, but as you can see now, nice, really smooth, quick motion there and back. I do get another lag when I come this way, and that's to their My Magazine, which is basically a flipboard integration. So as you can see, the response on there is a little weird, and sometimes it does that where it drops down or it'll pop up from the bottom instead of coming from the side like it's supposed to. Sometimes it doesn't respond at all. Um, so yeah, that, that's still a little weird, but that's exactly what it did before the Lollipop update. So that has nothing to do with Lollipop. That's just the way that that specific integration is designed, or that's yeah, just the way it is. Um, Another thing that they've done, which is a lollipop thing, not really Samsung, but I thought Samsung would have handled it better. If you notice in your sound settings, I'm pressing this, but nothing's happening, right? Um, if you notice a little pop-up message down here, it's saying that I need to be set into um, a different interruption mode. So it's like priority mode, all or none. Um, and what that means is lollipop has integrated a new uh, sound toggle. So even here, if you notice, I'm pressing volume up and it won't let me turn the volume up. It won't let me do anything. I have to go into settings, and not these settings, because again, nothing except for media volume can be controlled. Um, I have to go, actually I can do it on the toggle windows here. Still can't use that icon. I have to use this one now, which is a new setup. So Lollipop introduced this new priority um, interruptions toggle for your uh, sound system. Your Basically all your notification sounds, ringtones, um, uh, reminders, notifications, alarms, all that type of stuff. Not media, it's a complete separate part. But just those type of things. Anything that'll notify you if you have a message, basically. Um, they've developed this new priority system. So if you put this in all, all means all, everything. So everything's turned on just like you normally would and now you can toggle back and forth. But if you notice, you can no longer toggle to the third one which is just mute and you know no sound and no vibrate. You can no longer do that with this phone. The only way to make it to where there's no sound and no vibrate is to come down here to none. And that's the way to do it. Which, personally, I think that sucks. I'm just gonna straight out say it, it sucks. Because I, I like to be able to have no vibration or anything like that, but I still want you know certain notifications to come in. And what I'm talking about is when you're in none, None means none, period, including alarms. You don't get to hear your alarm if you're in none. None means zero interruptions, period. So maybe if you're in the movies or if you're in an important meeting and you don't want your phone to accidentally go off with something that you forgot to turn off, you put it to none and zero comes through. You'll still get the messages. They'll still pop up on the screen. Um, you know, If your screen's on, you'll see them, but you won't get anything. No blinking lights, no sounds, nothing. It's completely as though it's off. Um, so that's what bugs me about it is I use my phones for my alarm and if you're just like me, you're gonna, if you use this feature and leave it on none because you don't want to be interrupted by messages or calls in the middle of the night while you're sleeping, um, you're not gonna get your alarm to go off. What you have to do is bring it over here to priority mode, go into settings, scroll down to your sound and notifications, scroll down a little bit further into this interruptions tab, and Make quick note, it doesn't even look like it's a button or anything. It just says interruptions, no explanation of what it is. So anyways, go into the interruptions and you're already on that one. You can also toggle through the other ones. Always interrupt and then priority and then don't interrupt for anything. Um, and so you come into here and then you get to choose. So if you uncheck all of these, then nothing will come up except for here it shows you alarms and other personal reminders are always considered priority interruptions. So those two are gonna pop up. Um, when you're in this this priority mode or all. So if you're in, don't interrupt. Um, 
I'm gonna have to double check on this one, but so far the way Lollipop's been running, um, if there's an alarm set also, that won't work because this is considered priority interruption. And this is do not interrupt, not priority interruption. So you see what I'm talking about there. Um, but here's one thing is nice. If you want, you can set it to where it's only phone calls are notified and nothing else is. Um, you can even change who you want, you know, what kind of contacts you want. So if you set up favorite contacts only, so that's nice again. So if you can put it into that, that setting, um, you won't get any notifications unless you get a phone call. So, you know, that's nice if it's an important phone call in the middle of the night and your cell phone's your only, you know, means of uh, contact, then that's a good thing to have. Your alarm will still go off. You'll still get your phone call, but nothing else will come through. So that's probably the, the shining star of this whole new system. And, um... Speaking of stars, you got the little star up there to let you know that you're in this mode. If you go into always interrupt, it goes away. If you go into don't interrupt, you get that little little no symbol. Um, so that's where that is. And, you know, right now, I don't like it. I hate it mainly because I like to have the ability of just swipe down, toggle to vibrate off, and I'm done. But now I have to go, as you saw, through more menus to do that. So that's a lollipop thing. Again, not Samsung, but Samsung could have just left that ability there to mute the, the vibration also basically no vibrate no sound that would have been fine so anyways um a little things you notice there's a 10 there now instead of a five <clears throat> when you slide your brightness scale you get to see a better preview of what it looks like um you do have the new carousel carousel style uh you know lollipop recents um if you have um uh, what's it called, Chrome already installed, it'll come, it'll make it default to where Chrome is also integrated into this. So your Chrome tabs are in there too, but you do have an option to go into Chrome and turn that off. Actually, when you first go in um, to Chrome, it'll it'll let you know what's new about it and tell you, you know, here, click here if you don't want it on. So that's new. Camera's the same. I can't find anything different on that. All the settings, everything's the same. Um, oops. So all of those are same. Still don't have the ability to uh, turn off the shutter sound on this model. I think that was only the AT&T or Sprint version that has that there. But as you can see, there's nothing there. I can't turn off my uh, um, shutter sound. I just have to turn the volume all the way down on the phone first. But, uh, you know, ways around things, no problem. So, yeah, that's pretty much all that's really changed visually. You know, besides the fact that, as you can see, little animations, they pop up from where you touch, except for the apps, they do the normal normal thing. So a little quick notification. When you get notifications, you get that pop-down menu now, or pop-down notification on pretty much any app that you're on. Which is a little weird. Sometimes it, it quickly will show when you're watching a video. It'll, like, you'll see, like, a quick little glimpse, and then it'll go away by itself. It doesn't hang there. But uh, I think, I believe you have control over that. Um... I still have a little bit of lag in the in the gallery, as you can see. It takes a while for that to pop up, especially uh, most time I've noticed is if I clear out this, if I completely clear it out, so now there's nothing, no applications running, and I go into gallery. Let's see if it does it. Yeah, it's still kind of the same. Every once in a while, it'll still do its thing where it just hangs forever, and I'm like, wait, did I even press it? And I'll go back in. Yeah, no, I I pressed it. it it's it's just waiting. Um, so again, and not a lollipop thing. That's just the way it was before. And it, I thought it would change, but I was just having too high of hopes there. Um, but other than that, it really, it does work. Everything works really nicely. Um, not much I can complain about nothing more than what I already have. Um, you still have all the white, you know, things going on with lollipop. It's, it's pretty much all this was just integration. I'm sure Samsung's waiting till their next flagship to integrate anything, you know, surprisingly new. Um, one thing I don't know if I just missed it last time, but I've turned on this, um, uh, basically multi-window view. I thought that was only on the, uh, what's it called? The, uh, the note series. So you can come through and, um, open up two different apps. So there, there I go, I've got two apps running at once, so that's kind of cool. Um, I, I, maybe I missed it, maybe this was already on there, but uh, that's a nice little feature to have if I'm you know, wanting to browse the net and do something else. So if I need to get some information and toggle back and forth, it makes it really easy. And you, as you can see, they're, they're independent from each other. Um, so maybe new, maybe I just missed it, but that was a new feature I turned on. And it, it was not turned on by default, I had to go into the settings. Um, so yeah. 
that's that's something nice and new and makes things neat, fun to have. And you just basically, when it's turned on, you press and hold your back button and then it pops out. And then you can toggle through the various uh, apps. There has to be an app that actually allows the multi-window. -win um, not all of them do, as you can see. Um, and then some other you can create and edit and whatnot. So, yeah. Anyways, that's the uh, the new the Samsung Galaxy S5 with the new um, Lollipop 5.0. It's not 5.1 or 5.2. It is still 5.0 exactly. So it's already on an older baseband. But with Samsung and all of their security things that they do, they pretty much got all that type of stuff covered for the most part. That's one thing I'll give Samsung. They're really secure. Um, other than that, it's it's more or less the same thing. Just a couple little extra little as you saw little highlights and. Fun lollipop editions. So anyways, if you have any questions, comments, don't hesitate to leave them down below. Um, I'm going to put a link in the description for that Samsung Keys program that you can download to your computer, your PC. Um, that way you can just get to it easier if you don't already have it. Otherwise, you can just visit Samsung.com. Um, I'm pretty sure if you just do Keys in, in the search, if you just do a Google search for Samsung Keys, it's easy to get. Um, it's really a great app, uh, sorry, program, but if you haven't received the update and you're still checking and you're using the um, uh, what is it, the G900F version which is this one's in Nordic but it's also the European version um, uh, pretty much all around Europe uses that version but if you have that and it's still telling you that you don't have or that you have the recent updates or you're all up to date and you're still on 4.4.2 which is KitKat plug it into keys you're more than likely have will have a uh, update waiting for you there so give it a try anyways Again, thanks for watching. Don't forget to give me that thumbs up if you like what I'm doing here for you. And subscribe for more stuff to come. I'll be doing something similar when I get the update to my HTC One M8. And until next time, thanks for watching, guys.